Hi, I'm Douglas Hendricks, one of your child's teachers here at Ames. I teach physics, engineering, and related classes like electronics and robotics. Since we can't meet in person for parent-teacher conferences here, thanks to coronavirus, I've prepared this little video to give you somewhat of a feel for what your daughter or son would experience if they were in one of my classes. The room that we're in right now is the room that we would normally be in if it weren't for COVID. Uh, not a whole lot of interesting things to talk about here. But in my lab, that's a different story. I've got some very cool toys in the lab here that I'm sure that you probably have some questions about. Some of the things in, the, in here and the projects we've done uh, are things that might possibly have been a reason why you sent your child to Ames rather than some other school. Uh, let's just talk about a few of them. This one right here is the infamous rocket project that uh, you may have heard about from siblings or other people who have been to Ames. The idea of this project is that our physics students are going to take rockets, we put them in the wind tunnel, and we measure the forces on them, and then we do other testing as well in order to predict how high the rockets are going to go when we launch them. And then and only then, we go outside, launch them, and we see if our predictions are right. Another one of the uh, activities that we do, I've got an electromagnetic rail gun here. I flip it on and, whoops, aha. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, we learn about how these work and use them for various, what I think are fun and interesting activities. In the electronics class, we have some fairly sophisticated electronics that we work with. Um, and then here is a robot that we built last year that uh, shoots balls. It uh, looks around and finds the target, automatically recognizes the target, and then shoots the balls towards the target. These are activities that uh, your students really benefit a great deal from doing. Now, one question that I'm sure that you have is, how can we make sure that your students don't get robbed of these types of great experiences since we can't teach in person right now, we're teaching online? Well, in order to then answer that question, let me invite you to come visit my online classroom and see what we do there. Welcome to my home. This is the room your children see every other day. Although I haven't yet shown them this half of the room. This is my physics slash engineering workshop. This is where I test out new ideas for physics labs and engineering activities and try to work out all the kinks before I assign them to your students. The other half of the room, this is the one that your children know. This is my office slash studio, now that we're holding classes online. And the reason we came here was so you could see my online classes. So let me start up my computer, and we'll take the final step, and we will fully enter my online classroom. Okay, you are now fully inside my online classroom. What you're seeing here is exactly what your children see. I can uh, interact with them face to face. If I have something I want to show them, I can pick it up and point to things and talk about it. But the really nice thing about my, inline, my online classroom here is that I can share my computer screen and we can use that to talk about various things. And it really helps the students to learn things a lot better, I think. What you're seeing right now is my Canvas page. So uh, let's assume that uh, we're in the, in the physics class. Uh, so this is what your students' screens will look like, too. I can click on the assignments here. Let's pick an assignment, uh, take a look at it. Uh, this, is my, this is probably my favorite assignment right here, the Flat Earth assignment. Let's take a look at that one. You may, if your students are in my class, I'm sure you've already heard about this. So what I do is I tell the students that I'm a member of the Flat Earth Society, which, by the way, is true. I really am a member of the Flat Earth Society. Uh, you see the name right there on that certificate? Yeah, that's me. Uh, and the tinfoil hat that I'm wearing is uh, not, not coincidental. Uh, so what I do is I tell the students that they need to prove to me that me and my friends, friends at the Flat Earth Society are wrong. And so the assignment is to do that, but I put some strict requirements on them. I say that they are only allowed to use observations or measurements or experiments that they themselves could personally do without leaving the state of Utah. 
okay? Because they're, they're always tempted to uh, just include pictures from NASA and say, well, okay, we've got photographs of the Earth is round. And I say, no, no, no. You're only allowed to use things that you yourself could observe or measure, and you have to do it without leaving the state of Utah. It's a lot of fun. So you see here how I can highlight things and how I can draw on the screen and everything. Uh, really, it's a very, uh, very handy tool. Um, also, I can pull up graphs here. And by the way, this is some of the data that your students used to prove that me and my friends of the Flat Earth Society are wrong. Um, this, this, I'm not going to go into all the details here. But uh, what we can do is we can draw on the screens and we can talk about the data and we, you know, we talk about this and we say, oh, down here in St. George, something really weird happens. And because it's all online, the students really absorb it better. I mean, I've had, I've had several students tell me that they think that this online environment actually is a better environment for learning certain things. Uh, and not only can, can we draw on, the line, draw on the pictures here and talk about it, but also everything that we do is recorded so they can come back later and uh, they can watch it again if they didn't fully understand it the first time. Right? Um, now you might say, well, that's great, but what about all those activities that I showed you in my physics lab? What about, you know, that the uh, rail gun that shoots things off? Well, guess what? We have a tremendous library of online software that simulates various experiments. Like here, we have a cannon, we shoot the cannon, we change the angle, we shoot the cannon again, we keep the angle the same, but this time we increase the uh, exit speed. Um, and if we really want, we can even, we can change the, uh, the thing that we shoot. Uh, let's, uh, let's shoot a piano. That's fun. Okay. So we're going to shoot a piano here. Bingo. There goes the piano. Boom. Oh, we almost hit the target. If only we had used physics, we could have figured out what's the correct angle in order to hit the target. It's a great activity. And I propose that this particular activity is just as good, if not better done online. Than, do, than it is in, in the real world. Now, for my electronics class, we have similar things. Um, ideally, you know, we would like to build real circuits, but since circumstances don't allow, well, that's okay. We can build these other circuits. This, the software simulation here allows us to, to build circuits and we can make them as complex as we want. We can add in various elements here really quick and easy, make super complicated circuits. Okay, and we can change with we can change the values of the resistance, change the values of the battery. Okay, you notice how the wow light bulb got a br lot brighter, except for this one up here didn't. Why didn't that one get brighter? We can experiment, and we can do pretty much almost everything that uh, that you, that your students would do in the real lab, except it's a simulation, of course. Now there there is still. I will be the first to admit that simulations can only take you so far. And at some point, you really need to hold a voltmeter in your hand and build the circuit and, and cut the wire and strip the wire and uh, solder the wires together. And so, yeah, okay, I will admit that uh, the online experience is not completely as good as the in-person, but it's, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I could go on all day. I've got so many different software simulations I could show you where your students can do laboratory activities. They can do hands-on things where they build things and solve problems. Doesn't matter whether it's electronics or magnetics or optics or kinematics. We can simulate a very large portion of the hands-on activities that are in my lab. We can simulate them online using this software like what you've seen that may not be 100% as, as good as doing it for real, but it's darn close. And to be honest, in some cases, I actually think it's better. Uh, even if we were teaching uh, in the classroom, I would still use some of these software simulations just because they, are, they do such a great job of teaching your children. Let me just end by saying thank you very much for entrusting your children in my care. I promise I will do everything possible to make sure they get a great education. Doesn't matter whether it's online here or when COVID eventually ends back in the classroom, we will do what it takes to give your children a world-class education here at Ames.